According to the internet, Winston Churchill once said, History will be kind to me. I know this because I intend to write it. Now, I'm not sure that he should have been so confident about how history would work, because it turns out that he never actually said that. But he did say something very similar to it, which makes it more accurate than most quotes on the internet. You know, and to be honest, I guess there's just something very powerful about having a person having some italicized text next to their face. But the point about history being written by the winners is true. I mean, just, just look at the American Revolution. America won that war. So history teaches it as a fight for freedom against the tyranny of England. But best believe, if England had won the war, well, history would be about how they put down a riot by a bunch of cheating thugs. These domestic terrorists threw our tea into Boston Harbor while dressed as Native Americans, which, aside from being criminal, is very problematic. And if history is taught by the winners, nobody in America is winning more than white people, which is why so much of what's in schools has been from their point of view. African-American history is not taught adequately. What we learn essentially is a whitewashed history. Studies have found less than 10% of class time is devoted to black history. Only 8% of seniors can identify slavery as a central cause of the Civil War. There is no national standard for what history is taught. Each state sets standards which outlines what students are expected to learn. Seven states do not directly mention slavery, and eight do not mention the civil rights movement. Only two states mentioned white supremacy. The kids learned that slavery was bad, but we ended it. Some stuff happened, but Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks kind of fixed that. And now look, Barack Obama, we had a black president. Racism is over. We're done. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that most students in America are only taught about a handful of important black Americans. Because can you imagine if it were the other way around? Welcome everybody to White History 101. We start off with Thomas Jefferson, where it all began. And then, well, nothing really happened until Tom Hanks. Class dismissed. But yeah, basically, America treats history the way most people treat their browser history. Just delete all the embarrassing stuff and hope no one notices. But the good news is that as society changes, they re-examine their pasts and ask themselves, should we keep telling ourselves what we wish happened or should we understand what actually happened? And that's what's happening in American schools right now. Students are asking their school administrators to incorporate anti-racist education into their curriculum. They aim to have books written by a person of color and their life struggles are required part of the curriculum. In North Carolina, a committee of social studies educators proposed that the term systemic racism should be included in the state's curriculum standard. California State Board of Education has created the nation's first statewide model for ethnic studies curriculum at the high school level. Education officials say that kids do need to learn about discrimination and oppression that textbooks often overlook. A lot of times in school, you don't see a big representation of black history. I see comments all the time saying, I learn more on TikTok than I do for my own school. Yeah, that's how much education is lacking in America. Kids are going to TikTok to learn, which is insane. Social media isn't supposed to be a school. It's supposed to be where you post stuff that gets you suspended from school. And I'm not saying you can't learn about history on TikTok. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying you gotta be careful not to mix up history with everything else happening on TikTok. Wait, so Harriet Tubman started the Underground Railroad and the weight loss dance? Pretty dope. Now, look, re-examining your history is not easy to do, especially if it requires some self-criticism. You know, in many ways, writing history is like a breakup. Each person wants to tell the story about how they were the one who was right and the other person was an asshole. You know, it feels better to say, she wasn't nice to my family, as opposed to, she found out about my secret second wife. And in the same way as American schools are starting to change what they teach about America's history with racism, it's causing a strong reaction from people who aren't comfortable with what their kids are learning. 
There's growing backlash tonight against what critics call the indoctrination of public school students in an anti-white curriculum. It has to do with the teaching of what is called critical race theory. Critical race theory teaches people and our children to judge one another not based on the content of their character, but solely on the color of their skin. It would have our children growing up hating this country and hating one another. It teaches more or less that America is inherently racist. State more or less that that if you're born white you are necessarily racist essentially every white person should apologize for being white and what happened 200 plus years ago we are tired of the continual drumbeat of our educational system as used the program of our kids to, to program our kids into thinking that america is a country of hate and division just because i do not want critical race theory taught to my children in school does not mean that I'm a racist, damn it. Bravo. Tearing up is like a white woman's go-to move for getting out of any sticky situation. Well, if it got me out of a speeding ticket, let's see if it works on a historical reckoning. <laughs> Look, I get why these parents are upset. I mean, they don't want their children learning that white people are inherently racist. But that's not necessarily what teaching about racism does. For example, a big reason why American neighborhoods are segregated today is because historically, the government made it almost impossible for black people who tried to move into white neighborhoods. It was called redlining, and it was a societal structure that still has racist effects, even if no white people in those neighborhoods now are personally bigots. The point is that you can look at your history critically without believing that you are personally to blame for it. And a good example of this is Germany. Right? They teach the Holocaust in the schools. But little Klaus isn't walking home from class like, oh, mama, mama, ich bin ein Nazi. They said that I was Hitler and I did the same thing as him even though I'm five years old. No, that doesn't happen because Germans understand that we learn from history to grow from it, not to wallow in it. But you see, what's happening right now is that in America, some people don't understand that and their hysteria is spilling into actual laws. Several states, including Florida, Idaho, and Iowa, have worked to ban the 1619 Project and critical race theory from their core education plans. Arkansas became the latest state where state agencies are barred from teaching any concept that the United States is an inherently racist nation. In Louisiana, a Republican lawmaker is now under fire for comments he made on the House floor when proposing the theory's elimination from academic curriculum. If you're having a discussion on on whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly. The there's, whole... there's no good to slavery though. Well, then w whatever, whatever the case may be, you're right, you're right. Yeah. That, I, I didn't mean to imply that. <laughs> wow, guys, wow. It's almost like this guy wasn't properly taught about America's history with racism, huh? Although I am glad that he recognized how wrong he was. You know? But part of me does wish that he had just kept on digging in. Oh, really? You think that no good came from slavery? What, I'm the only one who likes the blues? None of you like the blues? Who's the real racist now, hmm? Still me? I guess it is still me. And you know what's really weird about this whole thing? Is how the same people who freak out about cancel culture now want to use the power of the government to stop bad ideas from getting into schools. But I guess the solution is, if anyone really wants to get anti-racism education in schools, well, they should put the curriculum in Mr. Potato Head's penis, and that way, conservatives will defend that shit to the death. Now look, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that systemic racism is behind all of America's problems. In my opinion, I think a lot more laws are written to protect the upper class from the lower classes. I mean, that's why a lot of laws that screw over black people also screw over poor white people. Like, a lot of counties in America, pull poor people over and ticket them for random things like tail lights or whatever they want to just to meet their quotas. But what they won't do is do that kind of thing on Wall Street, right? They don't pull people over who have access to lawyers or access to power. No one's frisking down the guys from Wall Street to check if they have cocaine. They wanna go after poor people. And it just so happens that the easiest way to find poor people in America is to look at the color of their skin. Because if they're black, the chances are higher that they're poor. 
Or look at how it's illegal to jump turnstiles in New York. I mean, that's targeted towards poor people, but it affects black people more because white men can't jump. But look, that's just me. The bigger issue that is being brought up with this controversy is, what is the point of teaching history? Like, what is the actual point? Is it to make kids feel good that they live in a perfect country with no problems? Or is it to give them an unsparing assessment of how society got where it is so that they have the tools to change it in a better direction? And I say it should be the latter. Because otherwise, as a wise person once said, those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it.